Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Yeah. We have, well, Dad's been really waiting for this. This is all I've heard for the past, well, however long the 720 has been tore apart. We finally got our crankshaft back. Uh, we got this crankshaft from Tyler Shoemaker at Shoemaker Tractor Parts. He found us a crankshaft, and then we took it over to our buddy Jeff to his machine shop, and he done all the machine work that we needed to be done to the crankshaft and the main bearings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting the 720 back together. So $4,000 later, we're going to be able to get this tractor put back together. So it's, it's uh, buying the tractor over again. Uh, now, Mom, don't be yelling at Dad about this. So, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get this crankshaft opened up here. Got to be gentle. I don't want to scratch anything. He, he, Jeff wrapped it really good. So we got to get... Uh, first thing we got to do is start with the center main bearing. Get this crankshaft back in the tractor. So it's not the easiest thing to do because it's so heavy, but we got plenty of help this afternoon. So we figure we'll utilize the help and get it put back in the track. Oh yeah, that's crankshaft in really good shape. The splines are really good on each end of it. So uh, got really lucky and found a real nice one. All right, we can start putting it back together. All right, so what we need to do first is we need to get this crankshaft in far enough that we can get the center bearing on it tightened up, and then we got to shove it the rest of the way in and get it started in its hole where that center bearing sits. So we got to be careful so we don't nick this crank on the way through because it's heavy. It's not going to be very much fun. So let's see if we can do it. Is everybody ready? George, you ready? No, you're not ready. You ready, Tyler? Yeah. Oh. Let me go in here. Probably far enough. That's far enough? Yeah, that's probably far enough. Will it sit there? It should. Okay. Will it sit there, George? Oh, shit. Um, we should go a little farther. Got to be in past this rod on oh, this side. Oh, past this rod. Yeah, so we can get the okay. center bearing past the rod. Oh. Ready, George? I'm going to pick up. Don't move around. Sit there? Yeah, just sit there. All right, now I'm going to get out of here. That's a good bad spot. All right. Just going to be careful because it's sitting on that spot. All right, now we can get that bearing put in. All right, so Dad's got one half of the main bearing in the center down in there. Just trying to get the bolts back in it. Tyler's got the other half there. This does have some dowel pins on it. We gotta get that in, that tightened together on the crank, and then we'll work it into its spot where it goes down in there. They could have left a little bit bigger holes up top to work. It'd be nice if that was cut out, but it can't. I apologize, I can't get the best of camera shots here because there's just not enough room. 
if we go over there, maybe we can see some more. Adjust the camera. Oh, yeah. So the whole, yeah. The two halves bolt together. Yep. There's some Allen headed bolts that hold them together. So we can't find a torque spec on them bolts, but everywhere we've read it says just tighten them good. There's six, not six of the Douglas. Yeah. There's not really a torque spec on those. But there is a torque spec on the other bolts that hold that cast bearing mm -hmm. into the block. Right there. All right, we'll get those tightened up and then we'll get our other bolts put in. So we are gonna torque these bolts to 45 foot pounds. That is what our machinist su suggested. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we got that center main in and dad's torquing them. Once he's done torquing them, I'm going to go around that side and I'll show you a very crucial thing that you need to do while assembling that. You've got to do it or it won't get oiled. Alright, so what I was talking about is right here. It says front under that tab. Make sure that that is lined up towards the front of the tractor or else it won't line up with the oil passage in the block of the tractor and that will not get oiled. So that is very, very important. Did you quit it? It's very important to get that lined up towards the front. All right, now we can move on. And it's also very crucial to bend over your tabs against your bolt heads so that your bolts don't back out. Oh, careful. All right, so we're putting connecting rods back on now. So we've got that side done. You need to torque these to 208 foot-pounds is what the book calls for for the torque spec on the rod caps. So Tyler's getting the uh, bearings opened up here. Now, all this was already measured up by our machinist, and all he had to do was reassemble everything. He had all this figured out for us. So there's no, we don't have to do no plastic gauge or anything like that. We got this rod tightened up. We got just a little bit of slight movement in it. That's what we like to see on these old two cylinders. Side to side. Side to side, not up and down. So Tyler's gonna get that bearing snapped in there. And we'll get our rod lined up. Get it put together and we'll get it torqued down. So, in the book, it shows that if there are no rods present in the block, you can put that center main in and go through this outer hole with the center main already on the crankshaft. But being as our rods and pistons are still in our block, we had to do it the way that we did it. Is it in there? No. Here, let me come around there so we can get a little video down in the hole, possibly. It's just not a not a lot of room to get camera opportunities. Push it in. There we go. See down in there? Yep, new bearing snapped in the rod. Yeah, that's all the way in there. We'll get some white grease on that, and then we'll get our bolts and our caps on. Then we'll get our rod cap on. And we'll get some video of torquing them. That's George's do job, torquing them. He's the biggest guy in the room. Yeah. Here, All right, bottom. so we're going to put the uh, nuts on the rod caps here. Putting a little oil on them. Threading them on. Now, them are a self-locking lock nut. That's why they got the grooves cut in them. Get them on, get them snugged up, and then we'll torque them. And then the rods are back together. It's not all the way through. Yeah. I don't think you can. I'll mm -hmm. tap the bolt in a little bit. They're like pressed. The nice thing about the other tractors is this is all open. It's a tin cover, but on this 720, 
That's all closed up and you can't get your hands in there very easily. No, where's that? All right, we'll get that pride in there. All right, we're going to turn it back a little to pull that cylinder out of the cylinder, or piston out of the cylinder, so we can get to it a little easier. Okay. Right there. Now we can get to it. Well, we're going to start torquing these. We're going to go 150 first. And then we're going to go 208. 150 sets them and then the 208 torques them. Tyler's going to take us to 150, but can he take us to 208? We'll see. You can do whatever you want. All right. So this is the same Tyler that we called Brick in previous episodes. His nickname's actually Brick on YouTube, but we call him Tyler too. Tyler's the one that put the uh, cold water suit on and crawled through the culvert to get the beavers out. Our heat rope. Do that again. 208. 208. And then when we put the balancer on, the crankshaft balancer, that one's got to go all the way to 250. And it's very important to line the marks up on that balancer also when we put it on. So remember that. There we go. They are torqued. So the rods are all back in. So we're that far. Now we can do our crankshaft balancer next. So this is the crankshaft counterweight. I called it balancer, but it's a counterweight. Here's the mark. We need to line that up with the corresponding mark on the crankshaft. Put this bolt through and then tighten that nut. Well, we've got that counterweight back in there, as you see. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque it. So Brick's gonna go ahead and torque it to 250 foot-pounds. While George holds the crank. Steady pull. There it is. That's good. You got one good clip. Okay, give it one more. Yeah, there you go. They say you don't have to go for the second click. They say you end up tightening it a little more, but who cares what they say? Tighter is always better than looser, if you ask me. So now all we got to do is bend that locking tab over, and then that nut's not coming back off of there. Smack your own fingers. Yeah, don't smack your fingers. Yeah. There you go. I'll just smack yours. Have That's thing. fine. Mine's been smacked before. Now yeah, just kind of massage that around. See so if you can get in there and there you go. Can you hit it right here if you can? I don't know if you can. We can turn it, maybe get it in a better spot for you. Yeah, maybe turn it. Yeah, we'll turn it a little bit. Well, there we got that tab back on there. Our bent back around that nut looks good. Probably saying, well, Brandon, why aren't you doing much hands-on letting these guys do it all? Well, these young guys need to learn how to work on these tractors too, right? Three years. Oh, wait, George and I are about the same age. Yeah, you got, what, five years on? Yeah, Tyler's the young one here. So, but at least they're getting the experience of working on these. Dad and I have been working on these together for a long time, so we've gotten to experience quite a bit on them. All right, so the next step is we should be able to put our mains in the sides. Well, we found our gasket that we need for this main. Just got to get it out of the package here. And we also have our new rubber seals that go in here, which George has those. Make sure that you put these back in. 
see? Little guy right there. We'll grease him to hold him in. Tyler's got the new paper gasket. What number was that gasket? F1922R. F1922R is the number you'll need for that gasket. George, you want to put a little grease on there and make it tacky so it'll stay in there? Yeah, I might have turned it over. These gaskets are very thin, so you got to be very careful with them. It's going. There we go. All right, get that rubber put in there. Grease the bearing. Grease the bearing, get some grease in there. We'll find all our bolts and get it put in. Okay, you ready? Sure. Go ahead and slide down the crank. Got to make sure that we get that oil passage lined up with that right there. Gently. There you go. Just watch your fingers. There it goes. There we go. Now, another, one. another bolt. George is getting it. He's putting a new, he got the new tabs to lock them in place. Did the rubber stay in? Yes. Yep, it stayed in there. Yep. That's why you put a grease on it. Keeps it tacky. So, we'll get some more bolts from George and we'll finish putting this in. Hey, right, so we've got these all snugged up. You said 75 foot pounds? Yes. 75 foot pounds on all these. I'll go to a bottom one. There you go. We're gonna, yeah, we want to star pattern these. Then we've got that little shield that we got a bolt on that catches the oil to put it down in that little tray right there. The butt cheek. The butt cheek. I don't know why. They say it looks like butt cheeks. I don't know. I guess it kind of looks like butt cheeks. All right. So the book does specify to start with this right side. So after we get these torqued, we'll bend all them tabs over. And then uh, we put our oil seal on this side. And then we work our way to the other side of the tractor. Good? Yep. Feel confident? It's not going to fly apart when, no. when Dad's plowing? Should it? So, it looks a lot better already. Looks better than the old crankshaft. At least this one's all in one piece. You're going to make a nice lamp out of that or something. Not sure yet. Got a lot of gaskets to put in yet. Thrust washers, gaskets, seals. I think this is going to be more than a uh, one part video. Okay, so if you're wondering what the part number is on these little tabs, it's F262R. It takes uh, six of them for this side. So, save you looking through the book. There's a part number there. So now we're going to move, we're going to leave this oil seal out for now. We're going to move over to that main bearing and uh, get it put in. That way it'll stabilize this crankshaft even more than what it is now. All right. So I may have messed up, and you viewers may have caught it, and I don't know why you viewers didn't yell through the camera and tell me that I was messing up, but I had these tabs wrong. Uh, I was supposed to bend these over here and then bring this up against the bolt head, which is no big deal. I caught it. I had a lot on my mind this afternoon. I was thinking about the Case IH 8940 that I was going to go look at that needs some uh, fixing. And uh, I had that on my mind and was doing this and just didn't catch it. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten all these out and write what I wronged here. So, and uh, I don't know. It's just one of them deals where I just didn't catch it. So no big deal. No harm done. But uh, I don't know what I was thinking. But the proper way to do this is to put this over this side, fold it around, Tighten that up, we'll torque them, 
and then we will uh, properly fold them around the bolt head. So my bad, definitely wasn't my good. All right, so there we go. Properly bent over the way they're supposed to. Kind of acts like a wrench. It holds here and then keeps that bolt from turning there. So uh, that looks good. They all turned out real nice. Yep. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this main in. There's no gasket on this one because this is still inside the case of the tractor. This one has this short tube here that oils it. We're going to get that lined up as we go. Turn your hole up. There we go. There we go. Up. Yeah. Let's find the bolt holes. Oh, there we go. All right. So that fitting is actually loose in the block. Once we get this drawed in, that'll all line up. Yep, that's right. Okay. Alright, line up. Turn it just a hair. I don't have a punch here somewhere. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, so much better. They're started. Oh, man. Thank you. Those last tabs were unavailable from the yeah. yeah, some of these things are getting to the point where you just can't get them anymore. Wilson's pushing the camera over. <laughs> Wilson wants attention. Now there is oil in the threads and the bolt holes I squirted some in. I didn't put them on the bolts, but that's okay. Alright, there we go. Alright, now Are these the same torque spec as the other side? Yep. 75? So we actually set the end play and everything for the crankshaft in the next section here. The next thing we got to do is get our gears put all back on our crankshaft. So we'll have to uh, get the deep fryer set up, get some hot oil, get the gears in there. Be able to slide them back on the crank. I think we can get all this stuff put back together too. Crankshaft gear, crankshaft idler gear. Oh, yeah, that lines up now. Might have to tighten that up a little bit. I have to investigate that a little. It seems a little loose to me. So we'll figure that out. Go ahead and torque these real quick. 75 foot pounds.
Okay. Now we'll check another one. Just to be safe. Well, get on there. Okay. Bend all the tabs over and we're good. Okay, so we're going to work on getting our oil seal in here. Because this outer case here has transmission oil in it. And this is a crankcase. So we don't want transmission oil getting from in here into the crankcase of the engine. So that's what this seal here does. For those of you that don't know. All right, we're gonna try to put this seal in. It'd be nice to have a nice long piece of pipe that would go over that crankshaft, but we don't. So we're gonna try just a brass punch gently knock it in there with a hammer. I'm going to let Dad do this, so if he messes the seal up, he can't yell at me. It might not go in there too hard. Nope. I think you need to hit more at the bottom. It's quite a ways out. There we go. Come up to the front a little bit. There we go. Mm -hmm. Bought the back kick out? Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Get something on it. Yeah, let's see if I can find something else. Now it's starting to go. Come to the front. Right there. Gently knock it in. Book says flush. Flush? That looks good. Maybe there at the top. Okay, so now our transmission oil is sealed from our crankcase engine oil. Crankshaft's back in, rods are back on, rod caps, everything's torqued, so we are this far. So like I said, I'm going to make a couple part series out of this. Next part, we'll be working on uh, putting the gears back on, uh, we'll be getting some other things assembled. We're going to have to come up with a piece of pipe to act as the flywheel in order to set the in play on the crankshaft. So uh, we'll do all that in the next video, but at least we got mains back in and the crankshafts back in. So anyways, thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. See you all in the next one. I hope you enjoy this. We're finally getting dad's tractor put back together. Uh, we are going to be pulling injector pumps and injectors out of it, and we're going to have those rebuilt. Um, a friend of mine is going to rebuild them, and uh, then we know everything is hopefully... 100% in this tractor. So after this, everything's sealed up. We run it for a while. We probably will end up doing a full paint job on it then. So we'll see what happens. We're going to knock on some wood, but we'll see what happens with it. But eventually this tractor will be fully restored. So it's a good thing we didn't uh, repaint it after we'd done the engine work before. So it had been kind of sad to tear it down after doing all that with all the new paint work. So uh, everything's looking good so far. Everything feels the way it should. So uh, it's going good so far. So anyways, thank you for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.